Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School of Business with uh, Dean Abbott, who is the co-founder and uh, chief data scientist at Smarter HQ, and he's author, also the author of this book here, uh, Applied uh, Predictive Analytics, which uh, helps to make data science intelligible to uh, business users. Uh, welcome, Dean. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. So, Dean, at uh, Smarter um, HQ, you're doing all this work with retail. And you know, retail is one of the areas with Amazon, of course, that's at the forefront of using data science. But there are lots of retailers that haven't yet um, uh, realized the opportunities available to them uh, using data science. Can you talk a little bit about how you're trying to bring better data science to retail? We're actually trying to do it in ways that are perhaps it's a little insidious without exposing all the data science that's behind what they're doing. Because most retailers and the marketers that are using the data don't really understand nor do they really want to understand all the underpinnings of what goes into a good uh, analytics process or predictive models or parametric models. So for example, when we build out scores for how engaged visitors are to the website, it's actually a quite complex mathematical process that goes into it to estimate what the dollar value of a visit really is. They don't want to know that. They just want to know is there a way to measure how engaged someone is? Is there a way to measure if somebody, some customer is disengaging? And so they see the value of it and they want to use it, but they're not prepared or do they really care deeply about exactly how it's built as long as it generates revenue, as long as it uh, builds better relationships, relationships with their customers. Yeah, but that's not a pure data science initiative. I mean, how can a data scientist even get started in trying to craft a model if they don't really know what the uh, business problems are that are uh, trying to be solved. And you really hit on what the issue is. The first problem is trying to understand what the problems really are and talking to the stakeholders, uh, trying to understand from the retailer's perspective uh, who they're trying to reach, which customers are trying to reach, and which measures are they not identifying properly to message the right way. So for example, uh, you can see how many times somebody's visited a website, how many products they've interacted with, but to uncover what the intent of that visit was. Uh, someone drops some things in the shopping cart and then they interact with promo codes four times. Uh, then they abandon. And so all retailers want to be able to capture that abandonment and say, okay, they've abandoned, we need to do something about it. But the more we understand about what the uh, visitor did, the more we can understand well, why they did it and what we should do about it. So in that case, if they interact with promo codes four times and they interact with shipping methods once, the promo codes was key. So probably what they're doing is interact with promo codes, typing in promo codes, none of them work. So they leave to go to another site to try to find a promo code that they can drop in and get the discount. So that changes the strategy for the retailer and how they should message that individual. If it's a very um, good customer, high average order value customer, then maybe you want to go to them and help them. Say, oh, well, if you're looking for a promo code, Here's one that you qualify for. Or did you know that you're 50 points away from getting a free reward with your loyalty program? You don't even need to look for a promo code. You've got it right here ready for you. So, so good data science requires not only good communication with the uh, business folks, but also a healthy dose of common sense and uh, the ability to um, know how to do some experimentation to, to get at the, the causal relationship. That's right, and common sense is unfortunately not always so common. But so there's general things we know from our own experience, but to your point before of interacting with the business and the more experience you have with the way the models operate, the more value the data scientists can bring. So what I really like to do with data scientists is to have them interact with the outward facing people in the company to see what problems they're hearing in the language of the, the marketer, in the language of the, the stakeholders so that they can start thinking through what the data means and what data we have that can help solve those particular problems. So uh, we have a lot of people at the Haas School that are doing startups, you know, entrepreneurs, and one of the questions that comes up uh, that you've talked about is, uh, who should you think about hiring first, right? Your, your data scientist or your domain expert if you're starting a new company? Mm -hmm. and that, that is a good question. And there's, I think, especially for us and especially in this part of the world in San Francisco, there's a, uh, a sense of the value of data science, which is really good.
but maybe it's an overinflated sense to some degree that domain expertise is critically important. Someone who understands the business and what measures would impact the business, or at least being able to, able to articulate those concerns qualitatively so the data scientists can come in and try to translate those qualitative descriptions into quantitative measures. And so I usually like to think of three kinds of skill sets we need. Now that could be, it doesn't have to be three people, but three kinds of skill sets we need for successful analytics. And I often call this a three-legged stool of successful analytics, where you've got domain expertise, someone who understands what to do and what the business needs, data science expertise or predictive modeling expertise to know how to create these models to uncover these patterns, and IT or database expertise so we know how to store and access the data efficiently. And with those three pieces, you've got the, the core pieces in place. Well, great, thank you, Dean. You're welcome.